this is Tell Me What to Read, powered by Booktopia. I'm Nick Wasiliev, and today we get to sit down for a very special podcast, which is being recorded right in the middle of Kids Month, where we are celebrating all things kids' books here at Booktopia. Right now, a brand new film and book, Embrace Kids, is currently playing in cinemas across Australia and New Zealand. So to coincide with the release of both the book and the film, we sat down for an extraordinary and enjoyable conversation between Dr. Zali Yeager and Taryn Brumford. Check the show notes below for timestamps for the conversation, and if you're enjoying this episode, you can drop us a review on Apple Podcasts, a like on Spotify, and let us know what you think. Now, over to Dr. Zali Yeager's discussion with Taryn Brumford, author of Embrace Kids which you can check out in both book form and in movie form right now. Hi, welcome. I am Dr. Zali Yeager. I'm a body image researcher and expert, and I'm here with Taryn Bromfit, who co-authored the Embrace Kids book with me. And we're going to talk to you for a little while about all things real parenting. <laughs> oh yeah that needed like yes. a drum roll or something like real parenting <laughs> well I just I need to start by setting the context I guess we are on opposite sides of the country at the moment um also my son is home with COVID round two um and after one day of being in bed he sort of sprung up and was like I'm fine now but of course can't go back to school so he is playing video games and we were just talking about the fact that um, you may well hear him in the background, <laughs> but that is real parenting and that's the way we roll here. Um, Taryn is in Perth who, and attending special screenings of the documentary film Embrace Kids. So I know that we are here to talk about a book and this is a podcast about books, but please Taryn, tell me about the Embrace Kids film. Yeah, I mean, it will give the, the book some context. So um, really quickly, I released my first film in 2016 called Embrace. Mm -hmm. uh, the number one piece of feedback was, I wish I had seen this when I was younger. So we decided to make a film for nine to 14 year olds. And we've just finished the film. We're doing our, <clears throat> excuse me, the Q&A screenings across Australia as we speak. We knew though that families would go and see this film and get so much from it but we knew that parents and carers and teachers would have a whole bunch of questions about, well, what do I do now? We all want to embrace, we all want to celebrate diversity and inclusivity and representation and all of these things, but what do I do in the home? So I approached Zali and said, and we'd worked on the film together. Um, Zali did a, a global study on the impact of the first film. So we knew each other really well. Well enough to be rejected, basically, by Zali when I first came to her and said, we need to write a companion book for when the film comes out because everyone's got to know what to do. We need to help them like a how-to parenting book. And what was your response, Zali? I was like, no, no. It was a really hard no to. And it was like deathly silent. It was like, why? Um, and then maybe you could explain what, why, why, why not? Why didn't you want to write this book? Yeah, I mean, I guess um, my parenting journey has been one, um, you know, where it, the reality definitely has not lived up to the expectations that I had um, because my expectations were like, um, yeah, incredibly, that it would be just this lovely, easy journey <laughs> and filled with hugs and sunshine and rainbows. And um, the reality has been that, you know, I've got some pretty intense children. Um, I had a, a boy first and then I had identical twin girls two and a half years later so it felt like I had a lot more than three kids um and some of the parenting books that I read just made me want to rock in the corner because like it seemed so easy in the book and then when I tried to make it happen in my house it just didn't work out the way that it was written down um and I know that you know we've sort of had ch chats about this, you feel the same way, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And for context, um, I have four kids, a 16-year-old boy, 14-year-old boy, 12-year-old girl, 10-year-old boy. Can I have to think about that? Um, <laughs> Sally, and you've got now? Nine, seven and seven. Yeah. So the whole range, yeah. So we kind of, um, when we approached this book, um, it was all about, okay, we know, we know what helps uh, kids and people in general to 
um, have a positive body image. Uh, we know what to do. We know what we want everyone, um, what strategies work. It's all evidence-based, but we wanted to approach this with a no shoulds, no shame, whatever you've done up until this point, you've done, you only know what you know until you know it. Um, and really just inviting everyone who reads this book to, to come on the journey with us. And, and it's not this... Um, it's, it's nothing's linear in life you know yeah. like it's so many ebbs and flows ups and downs and I think we really put a spin on this book um, around one of my favorite quotes and I think you love it too as well Zali that Steve Furtick quote which is uh, don't compare your behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel we so often do it um, and it makes us feel miserable about our parenting or about our bodies or about our lives in general mm. Um, yeah, and so I guess when we approached the book, um, a lot of my work in the past had been around um, mothers and how their body image shifts through the huge changes that our bodies and identities go through as we sort of move into motherhood and, um, you know, however that happens for us, um, our bodies change, our lives change who we are changes and um, I've done a lot of research in this space and really wanted to create a book that would start with the parents and um, I know from all of my work beating my head up against the wall for the last 10 years that like parents would rarely buy a book for themselves to help themselves like they'll buy something to do it for the kids <laughs> and so I was like okay we're gonna help the kids but um, you as the parents are actually the most powerful force here um every parent we talk to says oh social media is you know such a huge influence on our kids it's really scary I I wrote down the other day I was speaking to a mother and she just said it's terrifying and I was like I agree like social media is really scary but actually as the family is one of the biggest influences on our kids from zero to 12 it's the main influence in terms of you know, the um, biopsychosocial model and all of the sociocultural influences that we know um, have an impact on the way that we feel about our bodies and the way we feel about ourselves. And so what you do in your home is really important. And, you know, social media is big and scary, but you can change things right now that are going to actually make a difference for your kids. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just add yeah. to that if that's okay, Zala. You know, yeah. we talked about this in the film as well, and you're so right. Everyone wants to demonize social media, but mm. the reality is it's here to stay. Mm. So I guess it's about getting people to use it in the most empowering way for them. Mm. Um, and often when I speak to kids in schools, I'm I'm always saying, show me your phone. Who's on there? Who are you following? And it'll often be people, and it's about their bodies and it's about how they look. Mm -hmm. And then I ask the next question is the people that you follow do they make you feel better about who you are mm -hmm. and the answer is often no um and then it's just a simple kind of reframe a little a, a, lots of questioning I find is really helpful when we're talking with kids uh, to say well who do you think might be someone you could put in your news feed that would make you feel like being a better human being today like who, who's someone that's doing I know we'll get to that in a minute with real role models but I think I would just love everyone to stop. I guess not. Yes, it's terrifying. And I, I wholeheartedly agree having four kids on it. Mm. Um, but I've loved my experience with social media and it's given me a voice. And I, I think we, I just think we need to take back the power when it comes to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so I think all of the work that we've put out, you know, we've just put it, um, the, the book has come out, the film is coming out. Um, very soon and um, we've also launched a website which um, nearly took both of our souls but uh, the Embrace Hub is live as well and that is a website with free resources for young people and parents and teachers and sports coaches and anyone who has anything to do with young people can go to this um, to the Embrace Hub and find things that, that are going to help them along the journey and things that are going to help them to work with young people. Actually, we need to put the um, the grandparents guide out as well, because that's one of my favourite um, resources that's coming soon. But um, throughout all of this work, there are some four key messages that underpin everything. And this was really drawn from all of the research over the past 20 years. I get very excited about the research times, not so much 
Oh, I know. I'm all for it now, as long as I don't have to be part of it. So I'm happy to take your science and go, look, the academic said this. Yeah, and you make it interesting. So um, that's the way that this works. But there's four key messages that really underpin everything. Um, do you want to talk through the first one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the first one that I'm, I get most excited about about is focus on functionality and I know for me having hated my body for a number of years and then learning to embrace my body and be okay with my body and then eventually just loving it um not that everyone has to love their body we can just be neutral about it too but the, the biggest reframe for, for me was, oh my gosh, I spend so much time focused on what it looks like. I've forgotten about how it feels. I get up to the top of a mountain after hiking and I was checking my watch to see how many calories I'd burned. Um, or if I did a good time instead of just taking a deep breath and looking at the view. And, and I think the reframe around functionality of our bodies is so helpful for our kids that they can marvel in all of the incredible things that their bodies can can do and I think it's just I think we've all been taken off course in this very appearance based world that says your appearance is the most important thing um Celeste Barber in the film does an excellent job of sort of saying for me it's about how I feel and then how I look, it's a bit of a PS really, you know, I, how I look, um, how I look great, but it's not the most important thing. And I think if we all stop to reflect about how much energy and time and worry we put into what we look like and think, hmm, maybe I could just pare that back a little bit. And that's what we want for our kids too, is just to strike the balance of focusing on functionality of their body and, and, and how their body looks. Yeah. And just to add to that, I've just like even sometimes, you know, you're so focused on, um, you know, the outfit that you're wearing. I get around in the world. You know, this is just what makes this all work. This body just carries us from place to place. You know, it's um, we know from the research that the more that people um, can focus on what they're doing, who they're being um, and the function of their body and appreciating all of that, um, the less they're going to worry about how they look. And so, yeah, functionality is very important for me. The one I get most excited about though is being kind to yourself. Um, and again, this is something where there's just so much research and evidence now, particularly over the past 10 years to show that self-compassion is really helpful in improving our, yeah, our body image, but also our mental health in general, our well-being. people who are more self-compassionate, like sleep better and, um, there's just a whole range of things that improve when we start to turn down that critical voice that pops into our head. Um, and for me, that critical voice comes up very often, very unwanted and very loud. And just the process of using self-compassion to respond in hard moments um, and then practicing self-compassion using meditations and doing some writing about it all of that just helps to turn down that voice and to turn up the kind of voice that makes it just easier to get on in life and, and do big things and use your voice and, um, you know, record podcasts and do public speaking and all of the things. So um, self-compassion is really, I think, something that we need to be teaching all young people, all people, but definitely young people as a strategy that's going to help you get through mistakes, hard times, challenges that sad moment you know even some of the social media stuff when when things happen in your friend group or on social media you can come back to self-compassion as something that's going to make you feel good yeah and in terms of um the the world being a better brighter place mm. you, you can't be kind to other people when you're not kind to yourself um and I think you know we we, we talk about uh, bullying in the film as, as one of the subjects that we sort of um, unpack a little and gosh it's some we had there's lots of tears when we sort of talk about it because I think we've all experienced bullying and we all feel so much empathy for somebody who is being bullied because the world is hard enough as it is it's hard enough being a kid without that extra that extra layer um, but it's so, yeah, I just, I love the self-compassion piece too as much as also the celebrating diversity and um 
we come in all different shapes and sizes and abilities of bodies. And I think there's so much joy and I'm experiencing that at the moment um, with the film and, and audiences and how good kids are feeling after they've seen the film because of all the different faces and types of people they're seeing and the different bodies and the different choices and I just think it's so beautiful um I often I have a joke with audiences sometimes and say imagine if we lined up a row of six month old babies all the diversity that we would see um it, I mean it'd be terrifying and awful <laughs> to have you know, a row of six month old babies um but when they're young, when when we're young, it's celebrated. We're like, you know, some are bigger, some are smaller, some are different colours. It's just like, oh. And when we grow up, we're expected to be the same. And I think for such a long time, what's been reflected back in the media and advertising is the one ideal. And then when you see that, you think, I'm not that, something's wrong with me. <laughs> and then you start feeling bad about your body. So I just, I love the opportunity that we all have to see that diversity is beautiful. Mm. And I just love that um, permission to just be yourself, look the way that you do. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, it's all of these messages, even like some of the hashtags that we see, you know, you do you and just um, be yourself. And it's, it is all of those things. There is a depth to it. Because once we realise that actually everyone is different and actually that's what makes the world amazing and exciting, it allows you to um, give permission to yourself to be different and to look different, appear different um, in all of the wonderful ways that we do. So the last kind of theme that underpins everything is recognising real role models. And this does touch on um, social media a little bit because um, it is such a huge influence on young people but also on us as adults let's let's be honest I'm a little addicted myself uh, and but um what we were talking about at the start of the conversation was that we do have a little bit more power like when we were younger and it was just Dolly magazine or girlfriend magazine and they got to choose and you know we had no say over what images we saw what ads were in there what sort of um, conversations were going on and now we can literally follow or unfollow different people and um, causes and animals and um, we can really choose what we what we are exposed to but what we see is that a lot of people choose to see things that are going to make them feel bad about themselves and we know that now all of the science is showing that that doesn't motivate us to do anything different. All of the fitspiration in the world does not actually make you want to go and be physically active. Uh, and so we can actually choose just to follow the things that are going to make us feel good. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Jamila Jamil, who's in the Embrace mm -hmm. Kids film, does a great job of saying block, mute, delete, repeat. And the way she says it, I'm like, I'm doing it immediately. Um, <laughs> she, she's, um, she is so awesome. And I think we can help our kids to to find those real role models. Um, and, and I guess this is why the film and the book work so well together, because when you read the book and you read the section on role models, you just go to the film and go, okay, I'm going to go through everyone who's been cast in that film because we only put people in there that we would want your kids or you to follow, whether that's Amy Shepard or uh, Chris Ormer from Special Books by Special Kids or um, Audrey Mason Hyde, Celeste Barber, Jamila Jamil. There's just so many awesome people doing awesome things in the world. And I guess we've just got to help steer our kids towards those people who are choosing to celebrate diversity and inclusivity and representation but also changing up the narrative about how we feel about our bodies um, and that it's it's not what we're here to do. We're not meant to be at war with them. We're not meant to hate them. We weren't born into the world hating our bodies. We've learned this behaviour but we've got a choice we don't have to. Mm. And I think that's probably what's most exciting about this book is that I've never seen, I mean, Zali, you and I have been doing this for 
Yeah, well, how many? I don't know. I was going to say thirty years. It's, it's a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a it's thirty odd years. We've written five books. We've made two films, published fifty papers. Everybody, that's not me. You know it anyway. But <laughs> not, I just love that though. When we combine our what we've done, yeah. and here's the thing: I don't think I've ever seen the world more motivated to get this right than now because. So many of us have had lived experience, you and I both, Sally, have had this ourselves, of hating our bodies and being worried about our bodies, um, having a deep body dissatisfaction. We don't want it for our kids. Mm. So all of a sudden we're getting to this stage in the world and in life and everyone we're speaking to where we're like, no, I'm not okay with my kids experiencing the trauma that I have. And I guess that's why we're really excited about this book because we're, we're going to show you exactly how to do it. Mm. Uh, and it's all science-based. So, um, yeah, we're, we're just so excited for everyone to read this book and um, help the kids because they need our help. Mm. And I find a lot of parents, they don't realise that this is a problem before it becomes a problem. Yes. And so a lot of them, you know, I'll t- start talking about body image and they're like, yeah, but my kids are only seven. So, you know, I don't, this isn't a problem yet. and it's almost like um, we wait until we see the signs of like an eating disorder or something before we would start to change the way that we operate. And what we're kind of advocating for, I guess, is that we just start way earlier than that. And that it's about just promoting really positive relationships with food and with your body. And if we can do that, we know that that leads to more engagement in health behaviors, better health outcomes and that we can just be happier and yeah, not have to go through all of that trauma. And I think um, one of the main things that we, you know, in talking about real role models is that we want the parents to be really great role models. And I just wanted to leave everyone with one thing. Um, You know, if there's one thing that you can do after listening to this podcast, um, it would definitely be to just stop saying negative things about your own body as a parent Um, And it can be hard because it's kind of automatic and sometimes it just comes out without thinking about it. But if we can start to be more aware of that and um, the fact that when we say those things, you know, we're passing on all of this kind of generations of attitudes about bodies, particularly women's bodies and and how they should look and and what they should be like. And, And we can stop that like today. Yeah, so, so true. So if you have the urge to say something, if you can catch yourself before you say it and you're like, oh, there it is, go talk to your partner, go talk to your girlfriend. I don't know, go do something else, but just don't say it in front of your kids. They're sponges. They mm-hmm. see and hear everything, unfortunately, um, of what we do. You've got to really be on your best behavior when you're a parent. Um, but if we can really be the role model that they so desperately need, um, that's 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 our job as parents. And um and, and we can do it because now we've got the resources. We've got a film. We've got a book. We've got the embracehub.com. It's got a, a suite of free resources to help everybody get the grandparents on board so they're not saying random things like they can the old grandparents. Yeah. What are people saying at the screenings that you've been at? I'm interested to hear what you hear from parents and from young people afterwards. Um, the, well, the best thing for me is... Uh, right from the get-go with all our test audiences, adults were just on board. They cried a lot during the film. They got it. Um, They were like, how do we get this into all schools? I'm like, we're doing it in 2023. Just just hang on a second. Let us all breathe for a sec. The kids are very passionate and very, I've been hearing things like, I need to go talk to my teacher and I'm going to talk to the principal. And there's this, and what we always wanted was, here's the baton. You Mm. take it, you run with it, you do within your community. So there's a real sense of engagement and um, um, it's like almost a social justice piece that they're Mm. like, I don't want to be bullied into hating myself. No, that's not going to happen. I mean, I think our generation wasn't capable of doing that. This generation is. I mean, they're pretty formidable. Yeah. And we just have to let, um, I guess, push them in the right direction encourage them to use their voice and then just like let them go for it and they're just going to fix stuff that we could never have (laughs) never have worked on absolutely 
Amazing. Um, and that's what I really like about having a book that's out in the world as well, is that people, you know, email us and DM us and say, like, this book has changed my life. My mom has been reading it and she's just like, oh, wow, I, I just, you know, this is really changing my life. And um, what was she saying? Like, I just don't worry about what people think about me anymore. And it's just like, okay, it's a little sad that it took that long, but Mm. isn't it lovely that people can engage with some of these things and then just feel like it's almost like a weight is lifted and you can just like breathe fully again instead of taking like little shallow breaths you know it's so so true and I think it's why um you know everyone who's listening um Zali and I just this this is our our life has been dedicated to getting this one right in terms of body image we've immersed ourselves in this world and I think having that lived experience and now being on the other side and, and having learned to embrace our bodies and that's, you know, that means different things for us, um, but to have a positive relationship with who we are and what we've got and focus on really what we're doing is, is a real gift and I think it's never too late. And I think it's why we're so deeply passionate about doing 5,000 projects at once. And I just I just realised I worked 18 hours yesterday and I ate a chocolate chip cookie in the lift um, for dinner last night. I was like, but I feel so energised. Um, and I think it's because people are jumping on board. And I've never met a single person that's learned to embrace their body and regretted the decision to do so. I just think it's the best feeling in the world. We can have it for us. And we can have it for our kids. Amazing. Well, um, I need to do the bit where we talk about where you can get all of this goodness. Do you want and me to so- drum roll that one? Do you want me to like do <laughs> a little? so the book is available I mean wherever all good books are sold you know where books are but um particularly on booktober we just we do need to say that when we both saw that the book was up for pre-sale on booktober it was like oh my gosh it's real now (laughs) legit authors everybody legit (laughs) yeah so there was that moment um So booktopia online um if you want to go into a store it's in a whole range of other retailers and there'll be, I'm sure, links and things. If you want to find out where you can see the film, go into your local cinema and ask them. And that's the best way to find out. If if it's coming to a cinema near you, um, there are also options to host a screening and you can go to theembracehub.com for all of that information. And just go there anyway to the Embrace Hub because it's got all of the resources and all of the information that you need to get you started. So thanks so much for having us. Thanks everybody. Thanks so much to Dr. Zali Yeager and Karen Brumpet. You can find links to all books mentioned today in the description. And if you're enjoying our podcast, you can drop a review on Apple Podcasts, a like on Spotify, or wherever you listen to our show. You can also check out the Embrace Hub, which was mentioned at the end of that podcast as well. Links in the description. Join us on Thursday as we continue support of Kids Month in our current campaign. Sarah McDooling sits down with Carla Fitzgerald, Ashley Barton and Hannah Took to talk about their brand new books. Until then, thanks for listening and never stop reading.